And here we start off with the very first card of the deck, Kyo Kusanagi himself. As you can see, Kyo is a 6 hand size, he has 28 health, and he runs off the symbols of air, chaos, and fire, which is the theme of the deck. It is a fire deck, as that is my preferred symbol of choice. Kyo has the amazing abilities of Enhance, you make a control check of 4 or less, and he, the attack gets either plus X damage or plus X speed, where it is your choice, which if where X is the number of cards in your opponent's hands. What makes this very good is that this is playable while committed, which is an amazing ability. It has a second ability that says form, commit, your next control check gets plus X. X equals the number of cards in your opponent's hand. That's an amazing ability to have. It rigs your checks, it rigs your speed, and it rigs your damage. So honestly, he's this is why he's my go-to guy. First off, we're going to be doing the attack list. This is Chasm Buster, which is a staple for any deck that can run it. It runs Chaos, Evil, and Fire. It is a 5 difficulty attack with a control check of 3. It is a 4 mid for 4 with a plus 2 mid block. It has the abilities of Stun 2, so when it comes into play, you can play the Enhance and commit 2 things in your opponent's staging area. It also has an Enhance of Lose 2 Vitality, and this attack gets plus 2 damage and plus 2 speed. We play for those as any deck that can run those should. Next we have the boot. The boot is a mostly vanilla attack, however it's one of the better attacks. It's a 4 difficulty 3 check with 3 mid, 3 speed mid for 5 damage with a plus 1 low block which already makes this card absolutely amazing. It has the modifier keyword of kick and it has the ability of stun 1. So, naturally, we play four of those. Next up, we have Z Maze Wheel Kick, which is a three difficulty attack, and it is a plus two high for one damage with a plus two mid block, and it has the kick keyword modifier. But the thing that makes you want to run this card is because it has stun three. We have the next two attacks, which we only do two of, is Flash Lightning at a, it is a one difficulty three check with a plus zero low block. Again, plus zero, uh, low blocks in this game are very important, as we will discuss further on down the road in other decks. And the fact that it's a plus zero is insanely good. It is a ranged attack, which we will also, which is also another keyword, somewhere to kick. And it's a reversal. It is zero speed for three damage. And it says, while this card is in your card pool, all mid attacks, all mid and high attacks get minus one difficulty, and that's a static effect. It also has E if this attack is blocked and immediately goes to your momentum. Your momentum. This is very good, and in Kyo, this is even better because you can block and reverse with this, and then immediately use Kyo's Enhance to give this attack upwards to plus 10 damage if the opponent's running a 7 hand size character. We run 2 of these only because we have other things to put in the deck. Finally, we have Dragon Lifter, which is the finishing move for the deck. It's a 4 difficulty plus 4 difficulty uh, 2 check with a plus 4 mid block that's not very good, but it does do things needed in this deck. It's a 3 difficulty high, or excuse me, 3 speed high for 4 damage. It has the abilities of stun 2, the keyword weapon, and the, abil and the keyword combo with the comboing being a kick. It has the combo enhance of this deck. This attack gets plus X damage. X equals the block modifier of the attack, which means it becomes an 8 damage attack because of the plus 4 block modifier. It also has... This attack gets plus 3 speed only if the combo enhance is played. So this is why it's the finishing move. It starts off pretty deep as a pretty standard attack, but it quickly becomes a 6 high for 8, and with Kyo, it can get, it can pretty much finish your opponent very quickly. Next, we're going to look at actions and assets for the deck. The first stuff we're going to look at is the t only two actions we run in the deck, toughest in the universe. It, of course, has fire, 
It has combo stun stun, meaning you can play this after any two stun attacks to get the combo enhance. The fire combo enhance is this attack gets plus X damage where X equals the opponent's amount of cards committed in your opponent's staging area. It also has an enhance of this attack gets minus four damage, only playable if you have more committed cards in your staging area than your opponent. We also are now looking at the asset, which I cannot pronounce the name of. I do apologize, guys. It's some language, I think, either German, it's European. It's the Hildes asset. In the UFS community, we just call it Jimmy Kimmel, so we'll just call it that. It's unique, meaning you can only play have in play one of, but I play two just for draw consistency. It is a weapon. It says enhance. Your attack gets minus two damage, period, or draw a card. So essentially, either you're minusing yourself uh, an attack, or and you can draw a card, or on your opponent's turn, you do in UFS you fulfill as much of the enhance as possible. So it, during your opponent's turn, it's just tap draw a card. Also, it has enhanced commit. Your attack gets plus two speed. If it deals damage, you draw two cards. So it's a speed pump. And if the speed pump makes the attack hit, it's free draw. Okay, we're finally on to the largest portion of what makes up a UFS deck, the foundations. First off, we're going to look at, we're going from highest to lowest in terms of difficulty in the deck. It is the ultimate team. We run four of these. There are three difficulty for a five check. It has a plus two mid block. It has an enhance, commit one foundation, and discard one card with a block on it. This attack gets plus X damage. X equals the uh, block modifier of the card discarded. Or it has enhance, commit one foundation, and discard one card with a block on it. This attack gets minus X damage, where X is the block modifier of the discarded card. We run four of these. Next up, we run three cards, which are a promo for you for Jasco's games, one of the Jasco games independence license, Shadow War. This is actually the box topper. It, of course, is named Shadow War. It is three difficulty for five, a plus three high block. It says E commit one foundation, or E commit. This attack gets minus two damage. If this attack deals damage, your next control check gets plus two. It also has E. Your Shadow War attack gets plus one damage or plus one speed. This is good because this in helps out Dragon Lifter and it helps out uh, Z Maze Will Kick. We run three of these. Next, we run For the Money. For the Money is a two difficulty uh, foundation with a five control check. It's a plus three mid block. It says response before your control check is ma uh, made to play an attack. Uh, this control check gets plus two. Your opponent may commit two foundations to cancel its effects and destroy this foundation. So you're rigging your control checks or you're making your opponent commit something. It's pretty good. I like it on the whole. We run four of these. Next we're running Best Friends. Best Friends is two difficulty for five control check. It's a plus three high block. It has E commit one foundation. Your your stun attack gets plus one to its stun rating. So your stun three becomes stun four. Your stun two becomes stun three. Makes you be able to tap a lot of things in your opponent's staging here. We also have E commit. Your attack gets your stun attack gets plus two damage. And since our entire deck is based around stun, we're getting its damage pump. We run three of these. Next, we're running Page to Protect. Page to Protect is actually a reprint that originally came out as a promo for in the Tekken 6 series, and we were lucky enough to get it reprinted in the newest Red Horizon series. It is a two difficulty five check with a plus three mid block. It says E commit and reveal your hand. This attack gets minus X damage. X equals the number of keywords such as kick, combo, throw, punch. Uh, get equal where X equals the number of keywords in your hand. It also has response commit before you make before the block step. You may return the attack speed back to its printed value. 
So if their speed is ridiculously high, you just tap this and it goes back to normal. We run three of these. We run two We from the mouse Humility from the Shadow War set. It's a two difficulty five check with a plus three low block. It says enhance commit. If your attack deals damage, add one card from your momentum to your hand. Discard one of your opponent's momentum. So you get uh, in the game during your end step when an attack deals damage it goes to what's called momentum. Um, this actually gives you cards back in your hand, lets you replay attacks. Good card overall but we're only running two of because we really don't need any more than that and there's more important cards in the deck than just this so we're only running two of these. Next, we're running Nursing Grudge, also from the Shadow War set. It's a two difficulty with two difficulty five check. There is no block modifier on it. It says, destroy this foundation if your attack deals damage. Uh, add a card from your discard pile with a keyword that is shared with the attack and add it back to your hand. So this is recycling. Uh, from your discard pile into your hand, so long as you share an attack, you would naturally call the keyword stun. You run two of these. Next we run Martial Arts Champ, which is a card that was allowed to be reprinted. Do you notice that most of my cards either have a 5-point shuriken or a 6-point shuriken on them? This only has a 3. This came from when UFS had Street Fighter from the Capcom from the Capcom company. We got lucky and this was reprint, uh, allowed to be reprinted. Uh, it's a two difficulty for four check. It says in hand response commit after your opponent plays a card or an ability that will let them draw uh, that will let them draw cards. Excuse me. You'll have to excuse me. It's hard to read upside down sometimes. After your opponent plays a card or ability that will draw cards or add cards to their hand, negate the ability of that card or that effect. It also has a Ken response, but Ken's not legal in Standard, which is what I play. It's He's legal in Legacy. Um, so that really doesn't do us any good in this time. We once again run three of these. We run... Next up is Clandestine Research. It is a plus. It is a one difficulty four check with a plus four block modifier. It's unique. We only run one of these in the whole deck. Uh, it is form discard your hand. Add one card from your discard pile back to your hand. Um, it also has enhance commit. Your opponent must shuffle their deck. So, um, once again, it's getting something back from your discard pile to your hand. It's at the cost of your hand, but uh, this could potentially end games. If you are lacking just that one attack and you know it's in your discard pile, you use this, you get it, you win, hopefully. We win only one of it. Next up, we have Brooding. Brooding is, again, from Shadow War. It is plus one difficulty for five. It has a block modifier of plus three high. It says enhance lose one vitality. Your attack gets plus one damage. And Kyo's a pretty healthy guy. He's really he's actually pretty high up there for a six hand size of twenty eight health. The only one that is higher currently, to my knowledge, is Vespera, and she's six hand size thirty health. But that's another deck for another time. So, with Brooding, we go with four of them. Next up, we have the Strength Within. It is a one difficulty uh, five check with a plus two mid block. It has Enhance, your attack gets plus two speed, or it has Fire Enhance, meaning your character must have the fire symbol on them. Your attack gets plus two damage. It's a low difficulty card with a decent block modifier, so we run four of them. And finally, we have Hope for One's People. It is a zero difficulty for five. It has a plus three high block, and it has Desperation, which can only be activated if your opponent is at uh, half their health. It has Desperation form. 
Commit, connect one card in your opponent's stage and get rid of it. So that means you can tap one card, any card in your opponent's stage and get rid of it, including their character. That's key up. Okay, now we're on to the sideboard. UFS does have a sideboard because it's a, usually a best two out of three. Um, the sideboard character is Paul Phoenix. Paul Phoenix is six hand size, 26 health. He has enhanced commit one non uh, character card in your staging area. This attack gets plus X damage. X equals the difficulty of the card committed. And he also has an ability that says response after you play a stun ability, commit one card in your uh, opponent's staging area, playable only once per turn. So, since half the deck is stunned, you're essentially getting stunned for with the ability to commit anything in the opponent's staging area. Next we have Class of Ages. Class of Ages is 4 difficulty for 5. It's a plus 3 mid block. It has Breaker. We'll get into what Breaker is a little bit down the road. Um, it has Response. After you are dealt damage by your opponent's attack, play an attack with a printed difficulty of X or like less. X equals the amount of damage you took. So it essentially makes any card you have a reversal. We have one more flash lightning in case we need that extra bit of damage. And we have defeated the rifle. We run three of these. It is two difficulty for uh, two difficulty five check. It has enhanced commit. If your attack deals damage, uh, destroy one asset. This is actually very good as some of the decks are very asset heavy. Uh, most notably, killing this is a card great for killing the Spiris spider asset. It also has fire enhance. Commit your uh, enhanced commit. Your attack gets plus two damage and plus one speed. So pretty good attack and speed buff. But it's mostly sideboarded just for the fact it's not really needed in a lot of decks. Um, right at this moment, um, it's just really there for asset removal. Uh, a couple last words on Kyo. Kyo is a early to mid game deck. Um, he can. Go in the long haul, but once you get outbuilt, it's kind of tough to win with him. He really is meant for early game or late game or mid game. Um, Anti stun has kind of been put to the wayside as of the newest bannings in UFS, so the deck got better. But uh, right now, this is my go to deck. Um, I probably will be switching up to Joe Higashi if just because it has the name Joe in it. Um, it also has pretty good uh, abilities to be played off Chaos. I haven't seen anybody build him off air. I don't really see a good air build off of him. But Chaos is his, probably his second best symbol, though some will argue it's his primary symbol. And fire is a secondary symbol, but I tend to run more fire-based decks. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, listening to How You Build Kyoku Sanagi. Uh, links to Jazzco Games will be in the comments. And don't forget to check out totaljusticegaming.blogspot.com for news on UFS and Vanguard. And I will see you next time when we look at a Vanguard deck on Let's Build a Deck. Thank you so much.